गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्कार सत श्री अकाल आदाब खुश आमदीद वेलकम टू द चैनल माय नेम इज कुबेर आई एम बैक एंड इट्स सो 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 ऑसम टू बी बैक आई कॉन्ट इवन टेल यू दैट द फ्रेश एयर द the the taste of the water the people again well i am back for the from the trip uh, almost a month gone for a month uh, nice and refreshing in a way but uh, it's so 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 good to be back so i really sometimes can't understand when people say oh we are leaving canada and we are going back well uh, good luck to you guys i hope you find great air quality wherever you're going anyways so we are back with our saturday morning live uh, haven't done it on a saturday morning for some time so it's nice doing this again welcome to the channel uh, <clears throat> in today's episode as as usual we will go through the uh, the routine of whatever has happened in the pnp draws uh, some other news that might be there of course we will talk about express entry because hey how can we get away without talking about express entry because it is creating so much of anxiety but let's get on with what we have for today right starting with the code of the week it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop confucius uh i mean I, i don't even know how i mean does this need explaining does this sort of you know need any comment at all but i i love this quote it it doesn't it sometimes it does it really just does not matter just keep going just you know there are so many quotes that are similar to this which give you the same thing and and sometimes you wonder why do people have to say something like this i mean shouldn't we already know this but apparently we don't right uh, we see something which is not to our favor which is not to our flavor and then we stop and we start thinking now this is not working for me the idea is not to stop the idea is to keep going sometimes you will not see the results immediately sometimes you will not see the results the way you want to see it when you want to see it how you want to see it because you are not the uh, as we call it the con- conductor of this whole orchestra there is another conductor out there who is actually playing this beautiful or rather who's who's orchestrating this this beautiful symphony so have faith keep going don't stop and hopefully one day you will realize that this beautiful picture that you have painted it wouldn't have been possible had you stopped midways so keep doing it keep getting along with it this is the canadian immigration weekly roundup stay up to date with canadian immigration news and trends tiktok instagram facebook twitter of course and youtube topics of discussion today pnp and updates express entry other news question and answers hold your questions i can see a lot of questions coming through already so just hold them back till we get to that section otherwise you might just lose your question there starting with british columbia they conducted a draw on the 28th of february invited 169 candidates 145 were invited through the targeted tech draw uh they were also other candidates invited under the skill worker international graduate streams as well required a minimum score of 83 which is to be very honest not too bad there are also other targeted occupations uh british columbia has now been consistently conducting draws inviting early childhood educators and assistants and uh, healthcare workers so this is another tip for people who are currently an international student in canada so if you are an international student in canada you are wondering what you can do to make sure things happen for you faster maybe when you calculate your skill worker stream score in bc you may find that your scores are not high enough well one thing to do is to basically complete your certification if you can as ece early childhood educator get some work experience and hopefully this stream where the scores are 60 points hello i mean that's like as low as it gets uh and and you will find that this can become quite a lucrative option if at all you are choosing to get this done sooner than later so yeah get this done sooner alberta beautiful alberta favorite alberta people have been waiting for the draws to be conducted with alberta they did conduct a draw last month as well they conducted on the 16th of february of course they don't announce it immediately and uh they invited 100 candidates with the lowest score of 357 now obviously there are nearly 100000 people more than 100000 people with score of 357 only 100 were invited nobody knows who are these 100 nobody knows what was the criteria nobody knows the knock code so please do not get too flustered with this that's how alberta works uh, also it has i mean because couple of them were were you know who became our clients so we do realize that uh, a people who 
did have siblings in Alberta. They were amongst those who were invited in this, this category of or this group of 100 people. So having a sibling in, in Alberta is, is going to be a good thing. If you have a sibling in Canada, maybe you can nudge them. Maybe you can push them. Maybe you can motivate them to move to Alberta. This is another way Alberta is trying to sort of encourage uh, immigration in Alberta. So if you can nudge them that they should move to Alberta so that you can take advantage of this uh, uh, stream, then yeah, go ahead and do it. I mean, this at, at this point of time, whatever you can do uh, to make it happen for you, go ahead and do it. So this is what happened with Alberta. As I said, they don't announce... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. They don't announce the knock codes. They have been given a allocation for 9,750. Uh, that is a big number. If you if you can, I mean, I'm not sure how many of you follow this, but this was the allocation that Ontario had for 2022. Uh, Ontario's allocation for this year has not been announced. So I'm assuming Ontario's allocation for this year is also going to be higher. But Alberta's nomination allocation is almost 10,000 nominations, almost. And so that's pretty cool. Uh, that basically means more people would be able to crack through it uh, this year. Prince Edward Islands on 2nd of March, PEI invited 46 candidates under the Labour and Express Entry stream. Uh, so far, 484 people have received expressions of interest. Uh, another thing I would like to point out with PEI, a lot of people get misled by the agents, consultants who say, we will lodge your file in PEI mein, or we will submit your application through PEI. Well, please note that PEI or Prince Edward Islands being the smallest province in Canada also has the smallest immigration PNP quotas and they tend to prefer, <coughs> excuse me, they tend to prefer people who are inside Inside, not only inside Canada, but inside their province and uh, most of the streams are aimed towards them. So a PEI is not something which you want to uh, bet on uh, if you are not in Canada at this point of time. Express entry, of course. On the 1st of March, IRCC conducted another express entry draw. This was draw number 242. 667 candidates were invited with a minimum score of 748. This was the fourth program-specific draw of 2023. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say, to be very honest. Uh, following, and this was this was following in from the last draw that happened on the 15th of February, which was a PNP-only draw. So at this point of time, effectively, there is now a official pause in the regular express entry draws. Let's talk about it while we are on that, right? So it's basically no draw, right? I mean, uh, because uh, yes, PNP draw is not really a draw. I mean, at least not the way we, we look at draws in the real sense of things, because uh, we know people who have their nominations, who have received their nominations, they will get invited nevertheless. I mean, if they don't get invited in one draw, they would in the next draw, if at all, you know, IRCC is not holding the draw for whatever reason. But that is because there is an agreement between federal, which is IRCC, and the provincial governments that IRCC would always invite the PNBs because that is how the program has been designed. That is the reason they get 600 points, which basically puts them right ahead in front of the queue and they get invited. So PNP draws will not stop at any point of time. That's how it happened last year during COVID as well. Uh, but with everything else, we don't really know what's going on. So at this point of time, 1st of March, uh, 242, that was the series of the draw. That basically means 242 draws have been conducted ever since Express Entry started, which was on the 1st of January 2015. In this particular draw, which was uh, a program-specific, provincial nominee program-specific draw, 667, as I said, invited, and 748 were the number of... Uh, so 748 was the lowest CRS score. Tiebreaker applied for candidates who had a score of 748 and uh, who created the profile on or before 12th of December 2022. Now, a lot of you are wondering how can somebody at 748 get invited? Like 748 minus 600 because 600 is their uh, provincial nominee uh, score. Uh, how can somebody with a score of 148 be invited? For those of you who, who are thinking of that, you know, in, in those aspects, to those of you, I would like to remind that on the, on the 13th of February 2021, IRCC conducted that incredible draw, which was CEC specific, where the lowest CRS score was only 75. 
And even in that drought, <laughs> tiebreaker rule applied and people at 75 old, so some of them were left out. So you can imagine how low the scores can go. It's absolutely possible if you are inside Canada, regardless of your age, if you have Canadian work experience, high school diploma, you don't really need much to be eligible. And if you then are able to secure a nomination from the province based on a job or based on the fact that you have a job offer from an employer, then you would be definitely be eligible under this particular program with this particular score. So yes, absolutely possible with 748. This is the pool breakdown. But you know, there is something there is something to take away from this pool breakdown. And the reason why there is something to take away from this pool breakdown is because the scores between 501 to 600, which shows as so not scores, I mean, the number of people in the pool between 501 to 600 is 2129, which actually, let me take you to the next slide. This was from the, the two weeks before 15th of February. The number of profiles between 501 to 600 was 1,415. And now on the 1st of March, 2,129. So only roughly, uh, what, 600, about 700 profiles got added with a score of 500 plus, which is huge. And the reason why this is huge is because before this, ever since 6th of July, when the, when the regular express entry draw started, we have been seeing more than 2,000, 2,500 people were adding into the express entry pool with score of, uh, you know, 500 plus. So with this number being reduced, this, to be very honest, is um, at least there is some, some positive out of this one. Uh, 491 to 500, again, 1,756 at this point of time. But if you see the previous the previous pool breakdown, 1,226. So roughly 500 people got added with a score of 491 to 500 and about 700 got added with 501 to 600. So not a big jump, not a big increase, as I would say. This also means a lot of people who were earlier declining their ITAs, right? Because they were freaking out. They didn't have their documents or people were telling them, just decline your ITA, decline your ITA because they had not completed their one year of experience, but they got their ITA anyways. A lot of those people, I think a lot of them have freaked out and have stopped declining their ITAs because now they are seeing the draws are not happening. Now that they don't want to take a chance. There are also a lot of people who did not have their documents in order or at a women of fancy would decline an ITA for whatever that reason might be. We have seen some posts on a group of people from people like that. I know of somebody who has been declining ITAs for a very long time, like almost six or seven ITAs, uh, just because of certain thing in their profile. Anyway, so the point I'm trying to make is it seems like either the people have stopped declining their ITAs, that is number one, or simply that there aren't enough you know, 500 plus people anymore. That's that's how it's looking like. But in, 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 in any condition, it's something to be relieved because at this point of time, 491 above, so people with more than 491 at this point of time, because I'm not going to calculate 600 plus because those have already been cleared out with the nominations. Uh, 3,885, give or take, because obviously this number is dynamic, right? So you have about roughly 4,000 people in the express entry pool with score of 491 plus, which basically means if IRCC was to conduct a draw today, uh, a regular all program draw, if they were to conduct a regular all program draw today uh, and issue anywhere in the range of 3,500 to 4,000 ITAs invitations, then your score could very well be back in the low 490s. That's the good or rather the hopeful thing. Uh, I, I mean, we're always looking for something hopeful in this whole situation. Uh, yes, somebody has just pointed out and I was going to talk about that as well. There were only 606. Then how they have invited 647 candidates? Very good question. And uh, I always wanted to use that. Uh, elementary Dr. Watson. So the thing is, this profile pool breakdown is not issued just immediately before the draw. It's not like they have, you know, just taken the screenshot of their pool breakdown and issued it just exactly one minute before the draw. <clears throat> this could have been taken at any point of time during the morning or the day uh, of the draw. And, and that's what has been issued. Earlier, we used to get the pool breakdown two days before the draw. Before that, we used to get the pool breakdown one week before the draw. We have now come to the same day as the draw, which is pretty good, which gives you the exact screenshot, exact glimpse of how many people in the pool. But that doesn't mean that that is exactly the accurate uh, screenshot or the glimpse 
of the, the pool breakdown just before the draw. So having said that, it's entirely possible that there were people in the pool who received their nominations, who accepted their nominations on that day because people are are basically waiting for the draws and at different points of the time they do accept so once they get the nomination in their account they have to accept the nomination once they accept the nomination then those 600 points get added throughout the week people keep getting nominations in their account a lot of people do not want to accept the nomination immediately because they want to make some small changes so uh, it's entirely possible that these 40 plus 40 people that the difference is you have seen those people, they have accepted their nomination on the day of the draw. So the time difference between the time that the pool breakdown was taken and published versus the actual draw time that happened on that day, that is the that is a difference. That's how number of people or profiles keep getting added or are more. So I hope that helps you understand that. Uh, I lost my chain of thought. Anyways, so this is, this is how it's looking like. Uh, 491 plus 3,885. Now, the big question, and this is from here, any logic behind pausing FSW draws? Well, I have theories. And honestly speaking, I do not want to share those theories because it just creates unnecessary uh, panic and anxiety. And, and, I'm, and I, I don't, don't wish to do that at this point of time. But let's, let's talk about what are the possibilities. First possibility that people are talking about is that IRCC's quotas of number of invitations is already limited now if we have been we've been talking about this for quite some time and let's see we are talking about it here as well uh yeah the number of quotas or rather the number of invitations that ircc i expect ircc to issue this year is about seventy thousand, not more than that uh, because that is the number of uh, candidates or rather that is the that is the quota for 2023 82,880 people uh, plus 20,000 from the pnp because that is roughly the number of people who are that is the number of that is a number connected to the express entry streams all pnps are not linked to express entries rather majority is non-express entry so if you say that they are roughly going to uh, take in roughly about hundred and some thousand people for this year then you calculate how many people have families then you calculate how many people decline and reject their uh, itas if with all that the number of itas that i anticipate this year give or take a few thousand is seventy thousand for this year they've already issued 16,559 with two months gone. So one logical explanation is that they want to sort of balance out the number of invitations for the next, for the whole year. We still have 10 more months to go. And if they keep inviting the number of people the way they have, then obviously. But then that theory gets smashed immediately because instead of Pausing the draws, what they could have done is they could have reduced the number of invitations, right? Instead of issuing 4,000, 5,000 invitations, they could resume, res they could basically just issue only 2,000 invitations or 2,500 invitations, right? So that, that theory gets smashed there that they have paused the draws because they want to spread out the invitations. Doesn't make sense. Uh, then the second theory is that uh, Bill C-19 is around the corner. Uh, we do not know when that would be implemented. We only know that IRCC had declared that their systems are going to be ready for implementation by spring. Now, spring officially is on the 20th of March. So two weeks from now, that's spring. That's the beginning of spring in, in, in Canada. Uh, and spring would be here for about two months. So that's, that's another theory because it's around the corner. However, uh, the bigger rule of law said that IRCC needed to disclose the categories of Bill C-19 uh, by February, which they haven't. So at this point of time, we don't even know what's going to happen with Bill C-19. We only have speculations. We only have, you know, those assumptions that that's how Bill C-19 is going to play out. We don't really know how it's going to play out. Uh, and because they haven't announced the categories, there is no point of thinking that Bill C-19 is going to be implemented next week or next month or whatever. I mean, I, I don't see it getting implemented until and unless they've already announced the categories. So that theory also doesn't hold very you know, strong. Then the third one is obviously that they have some more glitches. They have some issues. Uh, well, honestly, I haven't heard of any other specific glitch because if that was the case, then why are they conducting the PNP draws? If they can conduct the PNP draws, they can conduct the regular express entry draws as well, right? So. Uh, glitches also is not something which is which I can gulp down my throat that easily. That doesn't really leave us with much theories, to be very honest. There is nothing 
There is no other reason. So many people are saying that IRCC wants to hold the score more than 490. I mean, to be very honest, IRCC has no benefit, has no advantage or has nothing. Uh, they have no vested interest in, in, uh, in linking or rather in sort of setting up some benchmark or standard for the scores that they would like to see. It's not really going to make any difference to them. So that, in my opinion, that theory also doesn't make any sense. Uh, because if that's what they have to do, then simply just reduce the number of invitations, right? Why create a pause? If they just issue 2,000 invitations, they know for a fact that the scores will be over 500, right? It cannot go below 500 because that's the number of people who are getting into the pool. So why conduct such large draws of 5,500 kinds? So yeah, that theory also doesn't hold very strong there. And to be very honest, I'm, I'm out of theories. So if you guys have any theories, please do share. We, we would like to see what, what you guys are thinking, what you guys have heard, what you guys are assuming. Because to be very honest, at this point of time, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely out of any kind of understanding or logic or assumption or, or guesstimate or uh, any kind of prediction as to why IRCC is not conducting the draws. I, I don't see any reason why. Uh, okay, let's see. This is another one. Recession and shortage of accommodation could be one reason for stopping ITAs. Okay, then uh, why would they continue to allow the refugees? The uh, you know they are continuing to allow international students, uh, unless you are saying the international students don't want to get accommodations, <laughs> or uh, and, and if at all you ever thought that not allowing people to come to Canada would uh, help them with recession. So, yeah, I mean, more people would help the economy would basically means sooner they get out of the session. So, yeah, it's not it's not yeah, it's not working like that. Uh, OK, there's another one here. Uh, simple answer to pause the draws. IRCC abhi mood nahi hai. So which basically means IRCC, IRCC is not in the mood to conduct the draws. Well, yeah, OK, fair enough. Uh, that would basically mean very, very wicked IRCC. But uh, I, I don't think that's the situation there. In in all in all understanding in again the only and as I said I wouldn't want to sort of create any kind of silly panic but let, let's discuss since we're only discussing and this obviously is just opinion based my opinion right and my opinion is only that IRCC obviously is working on the systems now the system that they currently have the express entry system that they currently have um, and the GC key that you see or the GCMS global case management system that they're working on is a very old system. It start, They started working on the system in somewhere in 2011, 2012, when they started designing the express entry system. It was finally launched in 2015, but they were working for two, two and a half years before it was launched. So the system is pretty old. There are tons of glitches. You know it, I know it. We see the glitches happening every day. They have to do maintenance almost every single day to make sure that it's up and running. In spite of that, we have problems. So now they have to make this major change to incorporate the build C19 factors, right? Uh, I'm not sure what kind of changes they would be making over there, but obviously I'm not an IT person. They obviously are, are in a better position. You already know what happened when they changed the knock codes, right? All they had to do was change the database from four digit to five digit and the system crashed. Right? It created all kinds of glitches. Now they are making such bigger changes where they are able to identify what are the categories, what are the people, what are the backgrounds, where they want to live, where they are currently living, all those factor choices, which to be very honest, if I was to create an Excel sheet and put some macros in there and put some filters, <laughs> I would be able to do it much faster, much sooner and much better. But in this particular system, IRCC is facing this issue. So in my opinion, because of all these changes that they are they are you know uh, making in the in the system for the Bill C-19, I have a feeling they have come across some sort of a deadlock. They have come across some sort of an issue uh, where uh, they're having some problem with the database. And that is one of the reasons why they are not able to continue with the draws. Obviously, they are still conducting the PNP draws. They are still conducting those draws. But then those are the profiles that are getting the 600 points. And that's very simple and easy to create, uh, conduct the draws. But with the remaining, because they have, they are already making those changes on the back end, that possibly, possibly is one reason why they are not going back to conducting the draws. The last pause that happened in November, December was also for the same reason because they had problem with the system. So that's the only opinion I have at this point of time. Other than that, I, your guess is as good as mine. So if you have anything better to sort of sort of say as to what is the reason uh, that IRCC is not conducting a draw, yeah, do share and we'll be happy to sort of discuss that as well. But that's basically all I have for you for 
express entry. The remaining number of profiles in 491 is 3,885. The 500 plus is 2,735. Definitely something is fishy and scores may drop below 490 in April if IRCC goes back to conducting the draws this month itself. Fingers crossed. Let's see how IRCC plays out. So that's your express entry. In other news, and of course, we have some other news, visitors to obtain work permits if they have valid job offers. Now, this is this this, this one is, is amazing. This And I have to talk to you about this one. So in pre-COVID, if you were a visitor in Canada, you could not apply for a work permit from inside Canada. So when I'm saying inside Canada, it basically means your processing of your application is done inside Canada. Same thing, if you are a visitor in Canada, you cannot apply for a study permit from inside Canada. Now, inside Canada, I'm not saying you cannot physically be in Canada. You can physically be in Canada, but the process of your application will be done outside Canada, just like as if you were physically outside Canada. So you get no advantage of being in Canada. During COVID, uh, they actually made the change and they allowed people who were in Canada as a visitor to apply for a work permit in Canada. Inside Canada, processing was faster, easier. The approval rates were much higher and therefore people benefited from it. And this provision, I mean, otherwise people who are who are as a visitor in Canada, obviously if you get an LMIA, you can go to the, to the border port of entry and you can apply for work permit. But if you want to apply online, then you were not able to apply online if that was the case. So uh, under COVID, they gave that provision. And that deadline, or rather that provision, was to end in February 2023, this year, February. So in February, they finally came out and said, okay, you know, we, we realize Canada has a huge shortage of labor. Uh, we can see a lot of visitors are coming to Canada. We would like to give them an opportunity to apply for work permit while being inside Canada. Let's extend it. So now it has been extended for until 2025. But what that has done, and I'm telling you, people and TikTok and Instagram and oh my God, so people created all these reels and people created all these TikTok videos saying that if you are a visitor in Canada, hey, now you can get a work permit. Yes, you can apply for a work permit, but it does not mean that because you are a visitor in Canada, you will get a work permit. I got a message from one of my very good friends who is in Dubai and he says, listen, I have a visitor visa. So when I land next week, can you get me a work permit? I said, no. He said, but the IRCC just made this announcement that you can now get a work permit if you're a visitor in Canada. He said, that's not what it means. What it means is that because you are a visitor in Canada, you can now avail the processing of application inside Canada. That's all it means. You still need an LMIA. You, I mean, if you know you have a if you get a job offer in order to get a work permit, you need to get an LMIA, or you need to have an LMIA exempt job offer. Either of the two, you need to have. Other than that, a visitor cannot apply for a work permit in Canada. So, you know, guys, please, when you read these kind of updates, when you kind of read this kind of information, please read it in context. Please read it completely, entirely. Don't fall into the trap of all these agents who are now issuing advertisements, creating reels, creating Facebook posts and saying visitors can now get work permits in Canada. Don't fall for that. Uh, you'll be the only one who will be losing their money. All right. So that's what the, the latest update was. Uh, IRCC is resuming biometrics collection. Also, what happened during COVID was that if you were a visitor in Canada, if you were applying for a work permit, visit uh, study permit or whatever your condition was, if you're inside Canada, you hadn't given your biometrics earlier. You were as a temporary resident. If you were applying for a temporary residence visa, you were exempt from giving uh, uh, biometrics. However, now you have to provide your biometrics that provision has now no longer i mean that the provision no longer exists you know you now even as a temporary resident if you are applying for another temporary resident visa you would have to get your biometrics done even if you are inside canada connect with us on social media platforms because you know hey we give you the best news possible with regards to canadian immigration and if you're still here boop on that like button and of course subscribe to the channel because why won't you subscribe to the channel, right? I mean, like, why? Why would you not do that? Right, so that's basically what we had in terms of the weekly roundup, all right? So let's let's get on with the questions. So many people have so many things. Let's and to talk about. Let's see, let's do Rooting for implementation of Bill C-19 theory. Uh, I don't think they have to share the categories before IT implementation because the system should be flexible for future change in categories. I agree with you. They don't have to announce the categories uh, before the system update. However, 
as per the law under which Bill C-19 was actually approved in the parliament, the law says that after the by the fifth sitting of the parliament after the 31st of January in the fiscal year, they have to come out and declare or rather announce the categories under which the Bill C-19 would be implemented. Uh, that deadline passed in February. I'm not sure why IRCC did not come out and announce those categories. Of course, they don't have to announce the categories because system changes has got nothing to do with announcing of categories. But system changes is something which they have to do in order to proceed with the implementation. But uh, they haven't announced the categories. Because they haven't announced the categories, they are not in a position to implement Bill C-19 or start conducting the Bill C-19 draws. That was the inference I was trying to draw. But yes, of course, the, the changes in the system has got nothing to do with the categories being announced. A 19-year-old dependent on applied status in Canada with parents got offer letter for September. Will the study permit be issued from September onwards? Well, the study permit, if you've applied for it, it will be issued for uh, you know for the for the study period that you the person needs to study the, uh, the so the if the person is already in canada they would still be issued with a study permit the end date would be the end date of the intake however the study permit does not allow you to work if you're thinking of working you cannot work until your studies have officially started but because it's a temporary resident status you obviously will have legal status in canada Okay, how many days does it take to link and generate an application number after submitting and paying for work permit extension? Mm, I am not sure what you mean. If you have already, aren't you applying online for your work permit extension? If you're on applying online, then you already have an online application unless you are doing an offline application. In that case, oof, there is no timeline to sort of give you. There is, there is, because you do not know when they have received, you do not know, I mean, of course you can track it, but, but you do not know when they started working on your application. In most of the temporary residence applications, the day they pick up your application, that is the day they also finish the application. So before that, you will not be able to link your application because there is nothing to link. You don't have the application number. You only have the UCI number. Uh, so the good thing, the, the better way to do it would be to create your, uh, uh, to submit your application online that would be the better way to do it scores of 493 any chance of getting an invite soon well if they do conduct a draw then yes 493 has a good chance sukrat singh thank you for the super chat unfortunately there is a, no question there i completed one year of canadian work experience if any employer issues an lmia for me can i claim points for lmia and work experience both note my lmia job offer is for new job uh, yes. So you have completed one year of work experience in Canada. You get one year of work experience points. No problem there. You have an LMIA, maybe for a new job. No problem. You can take 50 points for the LMIA uh, for the new job offer. There is no problem there as well. Got PR 2.5 years back. Did soft landing two weeks at a time. Never lived in Canada. Lost PR card. Now applying for PRTD. How do I prove that I met residency obligations? Well, you are in not big trouble to be very honest well you will simply attach a letter of explanation saying that you got your pr at this point of time you did not live in canada you've returned back you still have so many so much time left within your five year initial period to return back to canada and meet your residency obligation which you intend to do provide a copy of your joining ticket provide copies of whatever addresses that you had in the initial point of time and that's just about it. Except that there is nothing else that you can do because your residency obligation, you will be only be able to meet once you get to Canada. And if you still have that five year period uh, from your initial day of landing, and if you still have two years there remaining, then you have a chance. If you do not have two years remaining in that, then it's going to be tricky. Okay, let's take the questions from the top. We haven't seen those. Uh, Pooja, thank you for the super chat. HR can't provide letter, initial email, had requirements and format, but didn't mention it is for PR purpose. Will it be, will it work as proof? Communication is 18 months old. Do I need recent email? Now, in your comment here, in your question, there are so many variables. There are so many, uh, I mean, uh, there are so many things that I don't know. So the first thing is, if your HR is not providing you with a, with a, the document, you can obviously request them, which you have. Apparently, they have emailed you whatever the requirements are. If they can give it to you on a letterhead, that's great. 
in the worst possible scenario, you can also request your manager who you are reporting to or a supervisor to give it to you in writing uh, and then get it notarized. In addition to that, you can then attach this email. If the email was more current, then it is obviously better. But in case you don't get it anytime sooner and if your employment was or if this email was received after you had completed your employment, plus you have other documents to prove your employment, like your employment letter, experience letter, offer letter, pay slips, pay stubs, uh, income tax returns, bank statements that show salary credit, then yes, you may still be able to get away with it. But it's always better to provide the documents that are being required. All these that you're trying to do are alternatives, which then fall on IRCC's discretion to accept it or not. Okay, uh, one of my friends got ADR from Saskatchewan. She was working full time and doing degree as well. What documents can be submitted to support them? Uh, what is the ADR? <laughs> You're not saying anything about what, what the ADR was and what documents are required to support what? So yeah, th this question is absolutely not clear to sort of give you any answer properly. Would it negatively affect my PR application if I submit my PR application within the next two weeks? and I have not filed my taxes for 21, 22. No, it does not. Your filing your taxes is not a mandatory requirement for you to be able to file your PR application. What taxes does is to be able to prove credibly your employment income. And that is what you need to show your taxes for. So if you do not, if you haven't filed your taxes, that doesn't matter, not, not for your PR application. I'm on spouse open work permit, work remotely for an Ontario based company while staying in Alberta. If my spouse is PNP nominated by Alberta, can I continue work my, can I continue working remotely for Ontario? Yes, absolutely. No problem. The, the, the provincial requirement is that you reside in the province. It has got nothing to do with what, whether you work, you don't work, who you work for outside Canada in a different province. That is not a problem. The, con the condition, the requirement is that you reside in that province. That is the requirement. As a person who's currently on a valid postgraduate work permit, but currently residing outside Canada for a year, should I do medicals again while submitting my application in a month? Sorry, which application are you submitting? So, yeah. You see, when guys, when you're posting your questions, if you're going to post a vague question, which doesn't really you know, tell me what you're trying to ask me, then unfortunately, I won't be able to give you any answer for that. I'm hoping to get Alberta Tech Pathway PNP invitation around so and so, but my job offer is valid, only valid until Feb 2024. Can I make change in EE profile after getting PNP before ITA from EE? Again, very vague question. I do not know what you're trying to ask me. Can you make a change after getting PNP? Yes, you can make a change. What kind of a change do you want to make, first of all? And mind you, as far as Alberta is concerned, if you get the nomination, you make changes to your express entry profile. And if it becomes eligible, your nomination goes out of the window. They will not give it to you again. So any changes you want to make, please make those changes in your PR application after you get your IDA. Again, I'm not able to understand if there was something else you were trying to ask me here. Got, oh, we did this, sorry. Oh, well, that's one way of getting my attention. Mr. Kubert, king of immigration. I, wow, okay. Uh, this is sounding more like one of those, you know, those scams, um, you know, anyways, from my experience, from your experience, what advice would you give to having the PR application processed as fast as possible? Okay, great question. <clears throat> uh, first of all, enter all the information correctly. A lot of times people miss on some information and therefore they get a ADR. And usually people get signed up when they get an ADR for, for example, they submitted an application quickly after that, they get an ADR for 5669. 5669 ADR is usually sent when there is some missing information. There's some information which you haven't given clearly. For example, your address history does not match with your work history, does not match with your personal history. There are some gaps there, something which you haven't really provided with complete information. Uh, sometimes you have provided... Uh, uh, let's say your travel history, which is not matching with some other information. So when there are this mismatch of information, you get an ADR. When you get an ADR, it basically puts an additional process time because it needs to get processed again, right? Or, or rather it gets to get back into the processing. That's the first thing. Enter the information correctly. Secondly, when you're preparing your application, when you prepare your documents, the more structured you keep them, okay? Keep, think of it from the visa officer's perspective. At the end of the day, it's a human being on the other side, right? And as a human being, if you see a disorganized documents in front of you, it will take from you as a human being, 
there is a bit of an emotion that comes on <sighs> again such a lousy application and then that emotion flows into the application instead of you presenting a very good application add a cover letter if you wish to if you have a lot of documentation uh, the cover letter says what exactly you are providing in that application or in that file for example if it's work experience on the top present your employment reference letter pay slips pay stubs bank statements income tax returns any additional uh, employment re related documents and then on the cover letter you say dear officer i'm providing to you my this documents for this work experience uh, as per this order a this b this c this d this or one two three four five six if you need any more information i would be happy to provide that so that is that becomes your cover letter or an index or an appendix or whatever you want to call it organize your documents well uh, use your letter of explanation in, in a in a judicial manner in a proper manner if there is any aspect of your application which you think needs clarity, please provide clarity now. But that does not mean you writing an autobiography. Okay. I know of some people, there was one person who wrote an 80 page letter of explanation. I mean, 80 pages, guys. Do you really think the visa officer has this much of time in the world to read your 80 pages explanation? In that, you're explaining where were you born, which city were you born, which hospital were you born, what were the parents' name? Why are you giving all this information? What relevance does it have? So be judicial, be smart, only provide the information that you think needs to be clarified. Apart from that, nothing else is important. Also, there are a lot of documents that people provide which are not needed. They are just so anxious. You are just stressed out. Obviously, I, there, is no, there is no debate on that. Express entry or a PR application can be full of anxiety because, you know, hey, it's it's after, after all, you know, you're... A once in a lifetime opportunity you don't want to make a screw it up and you don't want to make any mess out of it so uh, what you would do is sorry i'm smiling because that was a message from my wife asking if i want a cup of tea she forgot i'm you know, like anyways so uh in, in in application always provide documents that are more related the fact that you won a debate competition in your school that certificate has what relevance in your application the fact that you were a volunteer for a charitable organization and they gave you a commendation or a participation certificate, what relevance does it have? You ran a marathon and you got a participation certificate for that. What relevance does it have in your PR application? So avoid all these kind of documentation. I know you want to show the visa officer that, hey, you are a person who is such a contributing person, such a nice person. But I, express entry PR application is, is extremely objective. There is points. Uh, you have claimed the points now you have to show documentation to show that you deserve these points and that they should be validated rcc then calculates yes you've done this you've done this you've got these points uh these points are valid these points is what you should get then they do a background check to see that you have not been a naughty person you do not have anything outstanding against you as in you you know doing any naughty things elsewhere and bang you get your approval passport request that's that's all it takes in your application keep it simple stupid kiss Always kiss the application and you would be absolutely fine. Do you think they will start? <laughs> you know, this, this always gets me. Do you think they will start PR to PR? No, there is no TR to PR pathway. Please wake up, have an extra cup of coffee, double shot espresso if you have to have it. Don't fall into the trap. There is no TR to PR. No way. It's not coming. Sean Fraser himself, verbatim, said, there is no TR to PR, at least not like what happened last time. So don't expect one. It's not going to happen. The Bill C-19 that we are anticipating is the TR to PR. It is going to give temporary residents in Canada a possibility, a provision, or a pathway to become permanent residents under the five strategic pillars of immigration. That's what they've said. Uh, that was the document here. Yeah. Strategy to expand transitions to permanent residency. This is the document that IRCC has created, which is for five pillars. And you can get this on the IRCC website. There is no other TR to PR pathway. Will IEC reduce draws reduce the quota for FSW people? <laughs> no, it's a separate program. It does not reduce uh, quotas for FSW people. I will manage to get CRS 490 after two weeks. I wonder 490 is enough now though. Well, if the draws do happen, then 490 is enough. If the draws continue to not happen, then any number is not enough, to be very honest. 
A person is eligible for both CEC and FSW. He got an IT under FSW draw. Should he show proof of funds? In my opinion, yes. But then you're saying he also has a valid job offer. So the valid job offer in this case would mean that you have an LMIA or you have completed one year on a closed work permit, which is LMIA exempt, and you have a valid job offer. In that case, you don't need to show proof of funds. Okay, questions flying through. My spouse has graduated but not getting job in his field is driving Uber a Knox C and will it work and for my spouse open work permit extension? What documents will I need for application under my from my spouse side as driver? Driving Uber is not Knox C. Uh, driving Uber is going to be considered as self-employed and as a self-employed you are not your, your your work experience is not considered as eligible. Therefore, you will have a problem getting your spouse work permit extension. The suggestion is to be in a job employer employee relationship and that regardless of what job you do, knock C, knock D, knock A, knock B doesn't matter anymore. That has ceased to matter since 30th of January. So please do. Yeah. Please uh, show work experience as eligible work experience, not as self-employed work experience. I'm on a closed LMIA exempt work permit. I have a job offer, not the same offer used for work permit. It says full time permanent, but does not say job is valid for one year after issuing PR. Is it valid? Uh, technically, no, it's not valid because the requirement from IRCC is that the job offer should categorically state that this job offer is valid for one year after you become PR. Uh, using this job offer the way it is, the way you are saying, it's entirely on IRCC's discretion. Now, there have been so many cases where IRCC has indeed accepted this kind of a job offer. And then there are equally also so many cases where IRCC has simply refused the application. So it's discretion. I got my PPR, but I'm waiting for my passport reissue. Do I submit only the new passport or both old and new? Can IRCC extend the passport submission date? IRCC can extend the submission date. Uh, you can you can raise a web form and send an email to the to the visa office as well yes they can send it no problem thanks kubair for sending all the good vibes well that's all i can send right good vibes good wishes good hopes and and hope everybody has successful uh, is successful in achieving their dreams can i create express entry profile before completing one year of canadian work experience well if you do not have any other work experience outside canada then you may not be able to complete one i mean you will not be able to create an express entry because when it will ask you have you completed one year of work experience so either you will say yes or you will say no if you will say yes but you haven't completed one year of work experience and then you're completing your express entry profile and there you show that your work experience is not completing one year and it is less than 11 months then the profile will become ineligible and you won't be able to create it so the good idea is to create it after you complete one year. How many days does it take? Oh, we did this. We did this. We did this. Sorry. Uh, please request PGWP extensions on behalf of so many international graduates losing their mind. Well, if it was in my hands, I would have said that IRCC should give postgraduate work, work permit extensions to everybody. Well, I mean, it only makes sense, right? I mean, they are struggling with labor shortage. I, I know for a fact that because of so many employers that we work with, from whom for whom we process LMIA applications, for whom we, we recruit people. And I know they're struggling to find people. So it only makes sense that IRCC, in order to retain the, you know, the people who are already working in Canada, extend their postgraduate work permit. But if, if they're going to listen to me, then I have so many things to tell them. But it's not me telling them. It's not, you know. So if anybody who can request for this and who can make an influence or rather who can influence is your local MP. You should be going to your local MP, your member of parliament, and those are the people who can influence at the government level and have this policy change done. Uh, consultants, lawyers, they unfortunately do not have that kind of clout or that kind of influence to make such a big major policy decision. So as, as individuals, as international students, as workers in Canada, as people who are contributing such immensely, incredibly to the Canadian economy in so many ways, you should all go to the local MPs, your area MPs, okay, and, and have them look into this issue. And they are the only ones who can help you advocate the change and help you sort of get through with this. But 
hoping for this and really, really praying, sending all, all the good vibes and positive vibes your way. <clears throat> it's just that they have backlog pressure and they want to streamline the existing backlog first. Hmm. If you are referring to that's why the draws are not happening, I don't agree with that. They don't have any backlog pressure anymore. And they are not looking to streamline any existing backlog. The existing backlog is being taken care of. So that's not really the issue. Uh, PR applications, which are being submitted now, express entry PR applications, they're getting processed like this, 30 days, 40 days, 45 days. My one client got processed in less than 20 days flat. I mean, we don't even get medical pass in 20 days, but this client got their passport request outside Canada, outland, federal skill worker, 20 days. I mean, unbelievable. Very recently, yesterday, we got another passport request, uh, 40 days, federal skill worker, but inside Canada. Okay. But they got their approval, 40 days. So the applications are being processed very fast. So there is no problem with the backlog at this point of time. There is no backlog pressure. And that is definitely not the reason why they would not conduct the draws. Okay. Uh, Shashank, my open work permit was approved under the 18-month extension for postgraduate work permit. I got an LOI to enter Canada. I am in India. My LOI validity is so-and-so. Medical validity is this. Can I enter with my medical expired? I don't think you will have an issue with this. Usually people who are with the postgraduate work permits or work permits, if their medicals expire, they don't usually have an issue. But, uh, and, and of course, your letter of intent validity is uh, uh, 28th of July. So I don't think you will have an issue. In the worst possible case, you would still be allowed entry into Canada, but you would be given only a six months uh, validity on your work permit. In that case, you will have to apply for the extension again. If you want to play it safe, then get another medicals done and, and upload it. But in my opinion, you will not have an issue. This issue usually happens only with international students who are coming to the Canada for the first time. <clears throat> CEC status, criminal info, shared pass, eligibility, security, not started. What is the usual timeline? Should I worry about PCC now? No, you don't have to worry about PCC now. Uh, it seems your PCC is fine. You're, you're saying your criminal criminality is already passed. The average processing time for express entry applications is now six months and below and less. Actually, they're being processed quite fast. And therefore, uh, that's what you have to be calculating. Nothing to worry about your PCC anymore. Pooja says score may drop if officer doesn't consider foreign work experience. Will application be processed if score dropped 490 is the same cutoff 490? Well, if your cutoff under which you received your ITA is 490, and on recalculation of your documentation, IRCC finds out that you know some of your documents do not validate and your new score drops below 490, then your application will be refused. It will not be processed. It will be refused. Okay. Uh, Janine, how do I handle credit card debt in proof of funds? Well, either you clear your credit cards or you provide a payment plan which shows that your proof of funds will not be affected with your debt. That's how you will handle it. Can this distribution be after the draw was conducted? Uh, no, the pool distribution is always before the draw is conducted. Will we, will we be having postgraduate work permit extensions this year? Any such information? At this point of time, there is no indication that IRCC is looking to extend the postgraduate work permits, unfortunately. In proof of fund, I forgot to mention about credit card debt. Is it a serious issue? If suppose the officer finds out, will they request an ADR or reject it for misrepresentation? They will certainly not re reject it for misrepresentation. Uh, in any case, they may ask you to provide the proof of funds, I mean, uh, explanation again. Uh, and in such cases, please always do provide your debt and liabilities because that does directly impact your proof of funds. All right. My wife is on ICT. I stay, oh, we did this. I'm getting the same questions again. After received PAL, and I do not know what you mean by PAL, Completed biometric medical, how long does it take for an outlander to receive PPR after completing the above stages? I, for processing times, please refer to the IRCC website. You can check whatever the processing times. 
I'm in a closed work permit. Unfortunately, I lost my status because I received new LMIA after the expiring permit. Now I lost status, can't work until decision is made. How to get work permit faster way, please? Ooh. Okay, so if you have a TRV, you can leave Canada, re-enter Canada as a visitor. After a few weeks, you can go to the port of entry and apply for a work permit because you're an LMIA at the port of entry. That's one way of doing it. Uh, second would be you apply for restoration of status and a new work permit online and then request IRCC to give you interim authorization to work because you had a previous work permit. Uh, yeah, that is your option. My daughter gave biometric how much time IRCC will take to next. The average processing times, you can find those out on the IRCC website. Please do tell about LMIA. LMIA means Labor Market Impact Assessment. This is a document that an employer needs to apply and receive in order to hire temporary foreign workers. This document usually means, or rather it, it states, and it means that by hiring of this temporary foreign worker, there is no negative impact on the current labor market conditions and that uh, the job market for Canadians and permanent residents is not being affected by recruitment of a foreign worker. That's what LMIA means. Okay, work permit expires in May, extension submitted in March, April, March, travel outside Canada for April one, two weeks. Is it possible to be refused re-entry? Could subsequent maintain status affected? Uh, well, as long as you have a TRV to return back to Canada, you can return back to Canada. Obviously, you lose your implied status. You can no longer work. Uh, you will then have to wait to receive your work permit. Once it is approved, only then you can work. Okay, let's go down to lots of questions here as well. See what we are having. Tourist visa can apply LMIA. So tourist visa person is not the one who's applying for LMIA. LMIA is applied for by the employer. So as a person on tourist visa, if you are able to find an employer who can give you an LMIA, then you would be able to apply for a work permit in Canada. Submitted work permit extension online, paid for it. However, I'm not seeing the submission of confirmation letter to share it with my employer to continue working. I'm, I'm, I'm not able to see an application number. It will take some time. Uh, if you have done it only today, it will take some time. Give it two to three days. You will you will get something in your in your application and you can show that to your employer. Are you expecting an Ontario general draw? And then what would be the CRS? I can't tell you what would be the CRS range. How can I tell you? I mean, I'm not Ontario. It all depends on how many invitations they want to issue. It all depends on how many knock codes they want to identify. It all depends on what is the last express entry draw. But I'm expecting a, a draw. Yes, I do expect a draw. They did conduct a draw very recently. And that was for the healthcare workers. That is also a human capital priorities, targeted occupation draw. Uh, the regular what you are expecting in terms of general priority occupation draw, it hasn't happened in a long time. But yes, you, I mean, I certainly expect one. And I know for a fact that, uh, uh, I know for a fact that at some point of time, IRCC will conduct the draws, or not IRCC, Ontario will conduct the draw because they would have an increased quota as well. I'm working for an American small scale company online, but the company is not registered with Canada. So will the job be applicable for my spouse open work permit extension? Uh, it will not because the company doesn't is not in Canada. You are not your, your uh, whatever you're being paid is got nothing to do with Canada. You are not getting any deductions for CRA. So your job would not allow you to apply for open work permit. My employer at past paid me with client checks, which was deposited to my account, how to show it in my salary slip? Will I ask them to provide the check number and mention those as client paycheck? Well, it is not for you to show it in your salary slip. Salary slip is issued by the employer where they say, what were your outstanding dues and how was it paid? So ask your employer to mention it in your, uh, to mention it in your salary slip. I received an ITA, uploaded all documents in December, going to India. Will my PCC expire if I travel outside after ITA and docs uploaded? If you have submitted your PR application, you get an AOR, Acknowledgement of Receipt. Then you can travel. Your, your PCC does not get affected at any point of time. No, it's not an issue. Okay. Uh, all right. Looking for Sukhraj Singh in continuance to my earlier. Okay. 
in continue, to continue with my earlier application, I need to maintain my status. How much time would you recommend me to apply for fake postgraduate work permit extension if LMIE application decision is taking time? I don't remember your earlier question. Uh, did you? Oh, let me just see. Okay, this is the one. I'm a CEC candidate with two years, eight months experience. Postgraduate work permit expires 14th of April. Employer offering me LMI in the same tier code. Have signed employment contract. Meantime, my status. How much time before me apply a fake postgraduate work permit extension? Well, as per the law, as long as you apply for a new work permit or an extension while your existing work permit is valid, then you go on an implied status and during that implied status, the conditions of your earlier or original status applies in your case, your postgraduate work permit. So if your work permit is expiring on the 14th of April, then even if you apply on the 12th April or 13th of April, then you are fine. Then you will go on an implied status from the 15th of April onwards and you can continue working. And then you said, I, I need to maintain my status. How much time before would you recommend? Well, if what you're looking for is extra time, then you apply for it as late as possible. Let's say two days, three days before the expiry of your status. How can one give justification when simultaneously is doing full-time job and study at the same time or same year to immigration officer? Is it legal doing education? It is absolutely fine. There is no problem as long as it is not inside Canada. You will just explain to the visa officer that you were studying and you were working and how was it possible? You can explain what was your course load. You can say how many hours in a day were you studying. You can show how that you were attending only weekend classes. Whatever was your course load, whatever was your study load, you can explain that, that I was only studying one hour or two hours in the college. The remaining period, remaining time of the day, I could go and work or I was doing an evening shift while I was working and in the morning I was going to the college. Absolutely fine. Just needs a brief explanation. That's all. Ontario IS Joe S. I, I don't know what you mean. You must have completed more than half of your studies while living and studying in Canada. What if I did three fourths of semester in my home country? I'm guessing I can't apply. I honestly do not know what we are referring to here, but please do follow the criteria and conditions as mentioned on that website. We have got PPR under express entry without PN. We are considering the option to establish in Quebec but we don't want to have any problem. What's your advice, please? Well, this is a very, very gray area or a tricky question. There is no clear answer to it. The idea is that uh, in order to be eligible to apply in express entry, uh, your intention should not be to live in Quebec. That is the express entry. But once you are a permanent resident and you are not a provincial nomination, provincial nominee, therefore, Charter of Rights and Freedom applies to you. Uh, there are tons and tons and tons and tons of cases of people who have actually gone ahead and lived in Quebec without any issues. So I cannot, I can neither confirm nor deny whether you can do this or not. Neither confirm nor deny. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that there are plenty of people who have done it without having any issues. Uh, okay. Nothing there. Sorry, Harpreet. Uh, nothing there as well. Pooja, is it necessary to notarize experience letter from team leader tl is not comfortable comfortable with it is there any other option okay so notarizing a document is not a mandatory requirement the requirement is for you to be able to provide a credible document now the reason we uh, we recommend notarizing a document is because it just gives it that much more credibility i know notarizing a document in india means nothing notary means absolutely nothing it has no value but in canada a notarized document holds a lot of uh, value in law and therefore, the recommendation is to get it notarized. My employer at last, oh, we just did this, right? Okay, uh, looking for any more. All right. Got ITA last FSW. I have maintained minimum fund for more than one year, but in the last six months, not maintained for two months, but have been maintaining since the last four months until I applied to the decision made any problem. I don't see any problem, but if the funds have been added into your account within the last six months, for whatever the reason might be, then you should be able to explain where the funds have come into your account. That's extremely important. Uh, if you do not explain that, then IRCC, it will just get delayed in your application. You may have IRCC wondering why the funds have not been applied. Uh, sorry, there is no question there. I completed my one-year Canadian work experience. If any employer issues LMIA for me, can I claim? Oh, we just we did that. We did this question. Okay, I'm getting same questions again. I'm not sure why. 
How many days does it take to link and generate? So yeah, see, same questions. Okay, same questions. I'm not sure why. All right, we'll just skip through all of these and then go right to the end so I can not have to see the same questions again. Yeah, same questions. Sorry, guys. Okay, I got NOI from Ontario at 483. My IELTS is expiring on March 25. My new score after giving IELTS is 508. Can I still go with human capital priorities in Ontario? The decision is yours. I'm not going to tell you whether you do. You should wait for express entry or not. But given so much of uncertainty, uh, I would have gone with Ontario because that way at least I know I will definitely get the PNP nomination or the PNP draw. So the decision is yours because it at the end of the day is a matter of $1,500. Okay. Uh, why PNP non EE application security not processing by IRCC? Number of applicants, all other criteria passed, but security not started. I don't know. I can't tell you because I don't know your application at all. Uh, non express entry can take nearly, uh, uh, yeah, on an average, can almost take up to two years at times. And there are certain processes around it that they take time with. So I can't tell you why it's not being done. And I don't know anything about your application, to be honest. What? Okay, again. My work permit expires in April, postgraduate work permit, score of 497. What next should I do to continue working or stay? Well, you can either get an LMIA, get into a closed work permit. You can also change your status to a visitor and continue being in Canada. I got NOI from Ontario. You see, same question. Sorry, guys. I received an ID, uploaded all documents, going to India. <sighs> see, same question. Okay, I'm going to go right to the end. My organization doesn't have a policy to provide a letter that shows I will be continued to work after receiving PR. I'm on a closed work permit. I'm a full-time employee. Okay, so what's the question? Referring to the client paycheck, when IRCC verifies that the bank and finds that the checks do not match with the name as they were client paychecks, how to get past this? IRCC is not verifying anything with the bank. IRCC only needs to see your bank statements to see that you are being paid. That's what they're looking for. Before postgraduate work permit expires, are we legally allowed to apply for extension? No, postgraduate work permits can be applied only once. So technically, there is nothing there to allow you to work or to apply for another extension. However, there is a loophole in the law, which basically means that any person who is who is applying for a work permit extension while their current work permit is valid, they will be on an implied status until the decision is made. So when the decision is made, you will realize you are out of status. Your application will be refused, but that doesn't stop anybody from making the application. Can you please answer my super chat? I think I have answered all the super chat questions. I think Harpreet, I don't see anything from Harpreet here. Harpreet, there was no super chat question. You see, this is what it is. There's nothing there. Sorry there. Yeah. Sorry, Harpreet, I don't see a question. If I haven't answered it, please do post it again. Or you can also post your questions in the comments below and I will definitely, hopefully try to come back and answer as many as possible. Kumar sir, Mr. Wonderful, there is only one Mr. One Mr. Wonderful. Kevin O'Leary, are you expecting an Ontario draw? It's been over 30 months. As I, as I said earlier, yes, I definitely do expect a draw. Uh, just don't know when that would be. Okay, I think I have cleared all the super charts. If I haven't cleared any super chart, now you see, this is a super chart, but unfortunately, there is no question here. There, the question is here. One year, 11 months of experience gives point for two years in postgraduate work permit expired are points valid if well one year and 11 months and postgraduate work permit expired so now how are you going to complete your two years of work experience now system will give you the points and uh, you can continue with the application provided you submit your application after having completed your two years of work experience but if your postgraduate work permit has expired then how are you going to complete your remaining one month of work experience. And if you cannot complete your one month of work experience, unfortunately, you cannot take the points for two years. Then you can only proceed with your one year work experience points. And that one year work experience points, if that stays more than the draw under which you get your ITA, then you can continue. If not, then your application may be refused. 
okay same question sorry uh, i work full time I worked full time for a Canadian employer from India during my process for postgraduate work permit for six months. Is it valid? No, it's not valid. If you're not in Canada, then the work experience is not Canadian work experience. <sighs> my score is 508. What are my chances? The chances are great if IRCC continues with the draws. If they don't conduct a draw, then what can we say? Before the work permit expires, we have done that already. I'm on a closed work permit. My employer is not supporting me for PNB. What else option have I left with? Find another employer. That's all I can say. If your employer is not supporting you, that's all you can do. Or you can also, either you or your wife can go on to studying in Canada, got into a study permit, then you get an open work permit. You can change an employer. You can find another employer, move to a different province. This is what you can do. It's been a long time since I submitted my profile and express entry. I'm from India and looking forward to get the nomination from any province. Any idea about it? <laughs> Such a vague question you're asking me, my friend. Well, the idea about it is that you can check individual PNP websites to see what their program details and criteria is and then check your eligibility and then you can apply accordingly. Uh, you need to do a bit more research than asking such a question, my friend. Ask something more specific. Come back to our Facebook groups, post your questions there. Otherwise, if you just want to know what your chances are, then your chances are that you have to check individual provincial websites and then see what your criteria, what their criteria is and if you're eligible or not. Uh, okay, I'm on a closed work permit. Can I study online in a foreign institute online while in Canada? Yes, you can. If it is not in Canada, you're not attending classes, you can study uh, online through a different foreign institute. That's not a problem. <laughs> Chances for reopening after reconsideration, spouse open work permit was refused due to marriage certificate missing. Well, if it was your fault, if you made a mistake of not providing a document, then reconsideration for such refusals, the, 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 the decision is, is quite low. I mean, um, the chances of approval for such would be quite, quite low. Not getting answers, sir. Well, I'm not sure what the question was, but I've already provided as much as I can. Uh, yeah, already answered that question. LMIA closed work permit score 472. IRCC calculated two years work experience. Send ITA last draw at 489. But I worked for one year, 10 months. Changed job but started work before new LMIA work permit arrived. Shall I accept ITA? Too many, too many factors there which I can't wrap my head around right now because I'm going too fast with this. Uh, as long as you have Canadian work experience of two years and you are eligible for those points and you submit your application after completing that period of work for which you're claiming points, then you can continue. Otherwise, please don't. All right, last few questions. Uh, currently 478, learning French. However, it's a long process and I will lose points for age. How beneficial will French points be after two years? I can't tell you what will happen after two years because nobody can tell you what's going to happen after two months. Uh, but French or Francophones will always have a lot of advantage. And that advantage is going to be throughout the immigration processes today, tomorrow, even a few years down the line. Uh, because French being the second official language in Canada, there is also a lot of push uh, politically to increase the Francophone immigration in Canada. So if you are a French speaker, you will always, always have an opportunity. You will always have a job. Uh, you will always have an opportunity to sort of get through with that. All right. Uh, ah, okay. I have posted my question twice. Well, unfortunately, because of so many questions being repeated, I'm not able to see it. Okay, last question. As a freelancer, I have all the relevant documents, including reference letters and bank statements, but due to COVID, no contract, no contract for a year in between will be a problem, or can I show the income from family business as consultant? I, I honestly do not understand what exactly are you referring to that due to no contract for one year in between, will there be a problem? As long as you have relevant documents to show the entire period of your work that you are working, you are being paid for the entire period of work, then you're fine. Now, if you're saying for one year in between, you had no work, there was no contract, there was no salary, no payment, not salary, no payment, no job, then obviously it's going to be a problem. You will not be able to claim that point. But if your total period of work is for, let's say, three years, four years, five years, six years, and out of six years, one year is, is there is a gap, then it won't make a difference because you will get points for the remaining. 
Okay, it's been a long time. I'm from India looking for, ah, we just did this, sorry. All right, thank you so much, guys. I know there are a lot of questions and I know the questions will continue. Uh, if you wish to sort of discuss your application, your queries, your concerns, anything to do with your application in person, then this is the link. By all means, please book a consultation. I'll be very happy to discuss with you your questions and your queries. Uh, meanwhile, after the end of this video, please post your questions in the comments. I will come back and try and, and, and respond to as many as I can. Thank you so much for joining in. Stay safe, take care, and I shall see you next time.